Hello, welcome to the video for what is the material rotator node. Here is our quick little example. If we go ahead and look at it in our scene, basically I'm taking this brick texture and I'm rotating it along the center and it's giving a rotated material effect. So let's see how this works. Our rotator node is pretty simple. It's accessed under our coordinate system and is the rotator node. By default, it comes in with these values and basically it's going to spin whatever input it's set into along the center, which is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.25 for the speed using the UV of zero. So the rotator outputs customized UV information that is then fed into anything else that takes a customized UV input. Normally you'll put it inside of a texture, for example. So by default, you can see this is going to be our result. Now the center X and center Y is basically in a 0, 0 top left, 1, 1 bottom right, and 0 0.5, 0 0.5 middle coordinate system of where we want to rotate this texture. So let's say, for example, we want to rotate it along the bottom right, then the X would be 1, the Y would be 1, and once this has gone ahead and applied, you're now going to notice it is rotating around this bottom right corner. So that's how you'd adjust where you actually have your rotational center point. So let's go ahead and put this back to the middle and we'll go to the next parameter. We have speed. Speed is basically pretty simple. It is the speed at which the texture is going to be rotated. You have small values of 0.1 and you can have large values like 2 or greater and you're going to see it affects the speed at which it rotates. Let's go ahead and set this back to 0.4 and we have a slower rotation. Now your speed, of course, can be negative. If we want to rotate the other direction, we just flip it, and now you're gonna notice it's spinning in a clockwise direction. So constant coordinate is basically the coordinate UV number if you're using a customized UV set. So if you are using that, make sure you change it here so it uses the customized UV set. Now, input-wise on the rotator, we have our coordinate input and our time input. And these will look, work pretty much exactly like you expect. By default, the coordinate uses constant coordinate, which is our default coordinate section. Time uses game time if nothing is plugged in, so it's gonna be have a constant input based on the time. You can put in a constant value or a scalar parameter value. This of course is going to be adjusted in real time. So since I have a zero here, we're seeing a zero rotation. If I was to change this to, let's say, 0.25, you're going to see a 0.25 value put in to our rotational amount. Time, since it's constantly moving, is going to give us this effect of a constant movement. But since our parameter here, our scalar, our constant, is a constant and is not changing from frame to frame, we're going to get the same output. You can change this into a parameter. You can access it from a blueprint, for example. And you could maybe make something rotate on command based on the input you give into here. Because if one frame it was 0.25 and the next frame it was 0.35, you're going to see a slight rotation. We set this back to zero. You can see it's back to default. So you can input whatever you want, maybe drive it by a timeline or lerp or something like that. Our next one is our multiple, our text or coordinate input. This is just a normal coordinate input set. If I was to put in this little value I have here, you're going to see it becomes a much smaller set of bricks because I'm taking our coordinate from a default 1 value to a, def to a 3 value right here. Basically, texture coordinate in, multiply it by 3, set my rotator input as a 3 for the text to the coordinate input rather than a 1, and I now have 3 times multiplier. This is, of course, if you need to adjust your coordinate system for whatever reason, it's a normal coordinate input. So, a nice use for this is you can, of course, have multiple textures affected by a rotator with multiple parameters. So, if I take this and this, plug in a default diffuse and a rotator, and then go ahead and adjust the values here. Let's go ahead and change these to much smaller. Let's make this 0.1. Oops, <laughs> let's try that again. That's our center. Let's make this a 0.1 for our speed x. And we'll make our second one 
we'll put this this one's kind of funny this is offset a little let's go back to 0.5 and we'll do this one 0 0.05 half the value of the other one okay there we go so basically i have this top one spinning at 0.1 for the speed and i have the bottom one spinning at half that value 0 0.05 and if we were to look at it you get kind of like a 3D effect where you have a bottom layer and a top layer both spinning at different speeds. And of course you can adjust it. We could just flip this one if we wanted to. And now we have another odd little effect where you have two different layers where a bottom one is actually spinning in the different opposite direction of the top one. And it gives kind of like this little waving effect, which is really weird when they actually sync up together. So again, that is our rotator node. Rotators generally drive a rotational value on an input for a texture. You can have multiple rotators and you can make some pretty nifty effects. Maybe you want a whirlpool effect or maybe you want a spinning effect without actually having to rotate an object. If you just rotate the material if itself, you don't have to rotate the object itself. And that sounded weird, but it's a way of rotating something inside of a material. That's it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below.